so like perhaps you try to sort of like also uh, provoke us to uh, okay. say uh, which is the decentering uh, human right decentering human uh, from from the from the many uh, ontologies so decentering human means uh, um, you know, kind of like a challenge, you know, for us to think uh, as non-humans, right? Is it possible? Because we are humans and can we, can we think in, in the sort of like uh, non, no, as non-human, right? Uh, so it is a philosophical question, you know, how to change habits of thought. Uh, and for us as for artists, uh, we think that through the artistic experimentation we can sort of like uh, destabilize, we can push and we can sort of like uh, support the challenge of uh, finding maybe new ways how we can um, change habits of thought. So I think this is the, this is the task today. Society. Not together, still can do something because this is a this hyper object, is, yeah, yeah. And once you face the hyper object, you are almost incapable to do anything. Yeah. So I think it's uh, it should be done first of all on individual scale. If everyone, like each uh, member of the society, would you know change its habits of thought, society would change. So I think first of all, the society has to do something on a very individual, a real individual scale, but you realize you change your habit of thought, you change something on your scale, and then everybody would be able to change something. I, I think so. No, but also accepting uh, those ontologies that were exterminated or repressed uh, during the modernity, I think it is it is really necessary condition for survival. You know, like we're talking uh, in these big sort of slogans, you know, biodiversity and so on. You know, but when it comes to the existence of uh, of the human being, mm -hmm. we have to we have to really like recognize uh, the indigenous. We have to recognize also the uh, all those that we consider it as non-human. Uh, but I think it's very it has to be like really individualized. A few weeks ago, when we were still. We're in Cambridge, you know. Uh, on Monday morning, we've got this green box for composting. And it came from the municipality of, mm -hmm. of Cambridge. Yeah? Sort of arrives to you, yeah? And you have to face it. And you have to finally, you know, separate your garbage and your plastic and your paper and your yeah, food, like leftovers of your food finally go into the separate box. It's very practical, it's very, you know, it's possible. Uh, immediate yeah. Yeah, and direct. Uh, it needs to be done on this infrastructure level, mm -hmm. right, you know, on the... Uh, and of course, when it is like, when there is this massive distribution of the composting uh, tools and also instructions, manuals, mm -hmm. you know, uh, it has, uh, then it has way much more, you know, big effect. Mm -hmm. you know? Uh, the same thing if we talk about the energy, like if we talk about, uh, you know, let's say massive support and distribution of non-fossil fuels. As we know, uh, fossil fuels are uh, massively supported by the states. Russia, China, United States, they are subsidizing fossil fuels. You know, and if even the 5% of the subsidies would, would go to non-fossil fuel research, that could produce uh, enormous change, you know. Uh, I think our responsibility is really to build me methodology, really build models, you know, like to really build uh, classes that are becoming prototypes, you know, of, uh, of, uh, the, of the new life, you know, of sort of like, uh, you know, so we're not talking about uh, some kind of provocation or, uh, or intervention or, or something, but it should lead to kind of like new models of, new models of life, you know, the models that can be evocative, that can be inspiring, that can set sort of like real conditions of living where people can really experience uh, democracy. This is something that is possible. Because, and the reason why I'm saying that is that uh, we as an artist and, and some of the architects, those who are working with, uh, with the people and those who are working with real materials, not visualizations, you know, not vector graphics, you know, uh, not sort of like projections, you know. But the actual uh, environment, actual experience of dwelling versus building, right? Mm -hmm. 
and the actual experience of soil, actual experience of, of matter and material, actual conditions of prototyping, actual conditions of tinkering. I think this is what needs to be now addressed. Yeah, right now we are doing the swamp school. So it's an educational tool or educational environment uh, where we want to look at the at the swamp, a very paradoxical biosphere. Just like very often when you see a swamp, people get like you know really horrified because that's something that has still to be drained and inhabited and used and uh, exploited. This was the most interesting thing for us as for artists to really propose uh, something that contradicts architecture, mm -hmm. right? Because architecture it was built. Uh, by draining the swamp, right? So when you say the swamp, means uh, basically denying architecture, right? You know, architecture cannot uh, exist, you know, without uh, exterminating the swamp. Uh, not only as a territory, right? You know, as uh, as we need a landfill for the architecture for in, the, in this like modernist sort of like sense, right? The developed and to be built, uh, and then architecture is also against the sort of like hybridity, right? The swamp challenged architecture itself to rethink itself as a discipline, right? And to embrace the hybridity and to uh, as a necessary condition uh, for the future survival and adaptation. Because now what we see uh, in uh, New Orleans and uh, Houston and New York and many, many other cities, including Venice, right, uh, that the swamps are coming back. Uh, our cities are becoming swamps, you know, with the rising sea levels and with all the other challenges that come as the aftermath of the, of the climate change. And uh, our, our only way, perhaps, of survival as human species, you know, is to really uh, adapt to this, you know. So, in a way, taming the swamp is the, is the only technique of, of survival, you know, for human species. You know? So, we have to become amphibians. So this is what we try to do for the swamp school, to learn the adaptation. Uh, but I think what is important to say that in art, you know, you have, um, you have such figures like Dushan, you know, who, who is questioning the um, uh, Institute of Art itself. Uh, or you have figures like uh, Gustav Metzger, you know, who also uh, claims the art strike. Is there a strike against the architecture? Is it like dismantle? Is it proposition to dismantle institution of architecture? You know, uh, but I think the swamp, the swamp itself, is 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 a way to challenge architecture, you know, as institution. So, you know, we're calling swamps to help us. <laughs>